Hey guys, it's Bobby from 3P here. Um, just thought I'd quickly make this video on the health and leisure industry prospectively reopening from July onwards. And the reason why I'm doing this is one, to hopefully put your minds at ease and more importantly, two, give everyone just a general understanding of where you should expect to be at as far as your personal safety is concerned, as far as your attendance when it comes to anything health leisure and fitness related to make sure that you are getting back to doing what you want to do and what you love doing as quickly as physically possible and in the safest way possible too. So I'm going to go through some pretty in-depth stuff here but the reason why and please don't skirt over it, it's massively important as some of these are not going to be optionals they are going to be mandatory across the board not just with regards to training with 3P but in any leisure environment any gym at least that this should be the gold standard and of course this is the, the standard that I'm going to be working with um, going forwards. So first of all everything that we're going to be covering in this video okay is in accordance with UK Active. So UK Active are the leading governing body and they're also the governing body which are directly working with the UK government to create a fighting chance of this industry actually coming back because the loss that this industry has received already has been massive. Um, there has been a massive shift in the way that things have to be delivered. There's also been a lot of uh, negative press put towards this industry as a whole, um, started all the way back with the sun before things even went into lockdown, which just massively spiraled out of control. Um, you'll see countless articles online naming people who go to gyms or leisure centers as gym freaks, fitness freaks, etc. And generally putting people in a bad light, which is pretty unacceptable, to be honest. Everyone should be given the opportunity to work on their health and work on the fitness and their own specific goals without being um, put into a, a bad light, so to speak. And the last thing that I would want and anyone else who has a business within this um, industry is to have a bad light shone on it because it's going to affect their delivery, it's going to affect their incomes, it's going to affect their business and ultimately it's going to affect each and every member and each and every person that comes through the doors. So all of this guidance is in line with the UK government guidance and you'll see there's two links there so you can go towards those and I'll be referencing some of them as we go through this video just to make sure that everything is um, legitimate and it's not something that I'm just making up and like I said we are going to be working towards the gold standard here not you know second best so to speak because your safety is just as important and I want to make sure that everyone's mind is put at ease and you are more focused on getting an amazing result as opposed to um, making sure that you are you know not going to get unnecessary exposure so as far as this goes, uh, there's a couple of main things that needs to be delivered. Uh, first of all, there'll be reduced training session sizes and enclosed spaces and even outdoors. Now, there hasn't been any specific guidance delivered on this, um, but I'll be using the guidance based off of UK Active. And I'm pretty positive most gym owners and leisure centers, etc., will be doing exactly the same as well, or at least there should be. Um, from this as well, there'll be an enhanced health and safety procedure, including risk assessments. Now, risk assessments will be held by the business owner so myself um, and they can be requested to be viewed at any point and of course any necessary sanitization equipment will be provided to both on a individual level and um, this will be my gold standard which i'll dive into a bit more and from a business perspective too to make sure that everyone is comfortable safe and minimizing any risk of of exposure because just going back to the way that the media has um, put the this industry as a whole in a bad light the last thing that I would want to do is contribute to that and I'm sure most businesses would say exactly the same too and then finally there'll be a strict enforcement of some of the rules now I'm not the government however I want everyone to be safe and regardless of what your personal opinions are and I'll keep my personal opinions away at the end of the day it's more about making sure that everyone is feeling like they are fully inclusive and more importantly, making people feel safe when they are training together. Because especially in a group environment, you have to remember that the ways that you can help both yourself and each other <clears throat> is by being understanding. So understanding that everyone has their own different opinions, different beliefs, etc. So don't be 
just because you may think that something might not necessarily apply to you doesn't mean that it doesn't apply to someone else or it doesn't affect someone else um, in their family too. Okay, so be understand of that. Also be courteous. Um, the situation that we're in right now with things reopening, um, things are going to be a little bit different. They're not going to be what you used to. So don't come back expecting things like they used to be. If you thought that that would be the case, you're sadly mistaken and want to make sure that you understand exactly what processes are put in place. And these are there for a reason. Now, a lot of money is being spent on this. A lot of time and effort's being put into the research of this, not just from myself, but pretty much every business owner within this industry will be doing exactly the same thing for the reasons that I mentioned before. And then finally, remember that you're part of a team. So again, whether you're training with myself, whether you're training somewhere else, the people that you are members with, the people who you are, you are training with, okay, they are your team, they are your people, so you should be there to support each other through the good and the bad um, and understand that the staff are also included in this team. So don't think that there's a weird segregation or anything like that. Just understand that everyone who wants to be part of this industry, whether you are a client or whether you are a business owner, you are part of a team. Okay, so be understand and be courteous and remember that you are part of that team. And that's going to make things run a lot smoother and make people feel a lot happier and safer overall. So just as a general outline, in session, there'll be a few rules of play that we'll have to go through and I'll elaborate on, on them a little bit more. And again, these are going to be set across the whole industry, so they're not specific to myself. Although, like I said, I will be following my own gold standard for this to make sure that everyone feels safe. And so some of these are um, set group sizes which may change in the future. And some of this you'll see um, things will be situation dependent. So as things either relax or if things start to head in the reverse direction and things start to tighten up a little bit more, then this will be reflected on um, in the delivery as well to make sure that people are maintaining that safety as required. Next, there'll be limited hours. Now you might think, well, if you're a business owner, why are you running limited hours? And the reason why is because I'm a coach. I'm not a loan machine i'm not the bank i'm not someone who's wanting to just take everyone's money okay i do have to have an understanding of things and i hope you understand it too but if you've been relatively inactive even if you may have done a couple of bits of exercise at home or did you know regular walking okay injury prevention is a huge thing okay the last thing you want to come back is is get injured and then even though you can train not be able to because you're just going to pretty pretty much ruin the whole experience for yourself especially getting back to it um so yeah there'll be limited hours mainly for injury prevention i don't want people getting hurt i want people to loosen off and feel like they're getting back into things feel like they're not being thrown in the deep end and given that time to readjust to training and again this should be across the whole industry either way this is my gold standard and this is how i'm going to be running it and then secondly it's to limit exposure and we'll talk about that a little bit more and how we're going to be doing this so as far as the minimum exposures are going to be, you'll be in one group, you'll have your own space and you're going to have your own equipment. OK, so if you're in your own group and if you have your own space and if you have your own equipment as opposed to sharing equipment where physically possible, then again, there's an absolute minimum risk of exposure. And then finally on this with the rules of play, OK, instructor says final and um, there's no point arguing. OK, the instructor rules are in place, one for an insurance purpose and two to make everyone overall feel safe and feel happy. So like I mentioned before, whether you agree or disagree with things, they are there for a reason. They've been referenced and they've been brought in as a gold standard to make sure that everyone is in the right position going forward. And then, so just for my lot specifically, so out of session support, that's gonna be in place. Now, some of the things that we picked up on before this even started was bringing in some more things to enhance the result that people are gonna be getting. So things like you're going to have the weekly individual accountability aspects going to be put in there, weekly group coaching calls. OK, so this will be delivered through the likes of Zoom, etc., to make sure that everyone has all their questions answered as and when, because when it comes to the end of sessions, unfortunately, there will be no means to hang around. And I'll talk about that a little bit more. Next, there will be the support group as well. OK, so the main group where everyone will be in so you can share your wins and your losses, your experiences, etc., and generally support each other outside of training sessions, because those who train with me know that I'm a massive advocate of exercise, not being the be all and end all. OK, it's a very small part of the journey. The rest of it is done outside of it. So the nutrition aspect, the mindset aspect, the daily activity, etc. So that support group is going to be there too to make sure that everyone's staying on top of that 
along with the other two as well. And then finally, you have each other. OK, so don't feel like just because you can't physically get in contact with each other or, or things run a little bit differently that you can't get support from each other. OK, these are still your friends, they're still your teammates. These are people that you should have bonds with um, going forward, whether you know these people you know, quite well or whether you've never met them before. OK, these are people that you should get to know and learn to support each other. OK, because especially if you're on a journey by yourself, the last thing that comes to mind when it comes to something like this is support and the need to realize that support is hugely important, whether you have never done anything um, transformation related before, whether you've never done anything exercise related before, whether you've never really took an in-depth look into your nutrition before. OK, you need to make sure that you are asking each other questions and as well asking, you know, your instructors, etc. too. They are there as the official wealth of knowledge that you should be able to tap into. So all of these out of session support pieces are going to be in place as well. OK, so you've got four different means of support and these aren't even the official ones as well. So with indoors, OK, so again, this list is not exhaustive and may be added to or subtracted from as the situation dictates. So first of all, as I mentioned before, your own group, your own space and your own equipment. So the reason why with the own group, OK, is it creates a simpler tracking system. So if someone becomes infected and they need to pass it on to a, other people, let them know that, look, they've had it, they don't know when they've had it. Then obviously, if we have people just chopping and changing sessions all the time, then it's going to and make things really difficult to track and ultimately shut down a whole business, which is just unnecessary and it's uncalled for. OK, so the time slot that you're given is a time slot that you'll use, at least for now. But, you know, as things relax and yes, we can change the fun. Next of all, if you're in your own group, it's it's proven that if you are regular within that group, OK, you're going to have that group camaraderie as well. So you can joke and you can laugh about stuff and you can you can just generally get on with things. And, you know, it's not a huge deal, but it also gives that support structure as well. And then finally, it's that consistency and routine. So you know the people that you're going to be there. You know what time of day you need to be in that place. So you can create your own lifestyle changes that are positive and based around the little bit of time that you need to dedicate to your training to. Next, within your own space. OK, so like I mentioned before, do not encroach on other people's space. So just stay in your own space. Your space is measured for you. OK, and it's more than the recommended three meters square. OK, this is again recommended by UK Active and you can check out on the link there. And You'll also be provided with all the necessary cleaning products where absolutely possible. OK, so we've gone through and we've basically checked a few different things to see what's going to be the best fit and what's not. And what's there is what's necessary. And if it's not necessary, it's not going to be there. OK, then finally, as far as your own equipment is concerned, OK, you'll be provided with your own individual training equipment. So no sharing. There will be no requirements for sharing. As things go on, more equipment will be bought and put into place. But essentially, as we go forward, OK, you will be provided with that individual training equipment. And that means that is your equipment to look after before and after as well. OK, so if you want to sanitize that equipment, knowing that it's yours beforehand and you can do, then at the end, please sanitize the equipment that, to make sure that things are nice and slick and we go through this as fast as we can. OK, so this is the COVID-19 Secure in 2020 signage. OK, so this will be in the space as well. And it'll also be held on the instructor's persons too here. <clears throat> so you'll see it's a basic checklist, OK, and it's mandated that businesses have to show this at the front of their, their business. Um, and there'll be no exceptions for this with, with myself and same with other gyms and leisure centers, etc. They should be showing this if they're not. Have a word with them and say to them, look, they need to be share, sharing this, OK? It's, it's there for a reason. And then you'll see, OK, so you've got the employer, the date, and then who to contact, OK? So the structure of the rules of play for outdoors. OK, so this one's slightly different. But again, this list is not exhaustive and may be added to or subtracted from as the situation dictates. I don't need to talk anymore on that one. So beforehand, please arrive before your time slot. Do not gather unnecessarily. OK, so respect others, especially if we're outdoors and we're in an environment where there's people who aren't training with us that are nearby. OK, spread yourselves out a little bit just so you're not a massive gaggle. All right. It draws a lot of attention. And if you're not someone that likes attention, then, of course, it's not really going to help. And remember, other people may not like attention, but outdoors is going to be necessary. It's certain elements. OK, next, sanitize your hands and then finally maintain your distances. Then as we go throughout the session, OK, so during, feel free to sanitize your own equipment as you see fit. Just as I mentioned before, you can do this whenever, before, during and then after. 
wear whatever PP you feel is relevant to your personal situation. So again, there's absolutely no judgment. You wear whatever you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. You put it on, you take it off whenever you want to, okay? No one's going to say you can or can't do something. It's your personal choice, okay? And then, as I mentioned before, do not encroach on other people's training space, okay? So have respect for each other with this. Again, your personal opinions might not be the same as others. And then afterwards, just as before, okay, so we're going to sanitize all the equipment using the, the cleaning products provided. Some things will be taken away and then they'll be cleaned separately because they, they don't bode well with the cleaning products that are going to be used and it will massively deteriorate the equipment. Then dispose of any spent sanitation products. So again, especially if we're outdoors, you don't want to be littering, okay, because if it's a space we're using regularly, then that's just unsightly and it's it's not nice for other people, okay? We're only there for a short amount of period of time. And then finally, don't hang around um, indoors, okay, so if we're near some that's indoors, etc. Or let's say we did a training session where we would be doing indoors, but we were outdoors, please don't go back inside and then just chill out, okay? So in summary then, okay, so all reasonable precautions are being taken. All right, so this isn't just a list that's been thought of and then just thrown together, okay? This is following guidance and it's there for a reason. It's being invested into both with time and money okay and other businesses will be doing exactly the same thing so just remember as well that these are tough times okay so be understanding of each other and of the systems that are put in place okay it's it's an exceptional circumstance that's going to be going on for an undisclosed amount of time and with regards to all of this you need to make sure that you're supporting each other okay so look after each other it doesn't just have to be about training and nutrition just ask people you know how you're doing etc and if you feel like someone needs help and needs some guidance with, with some of this, whether they're another business owner, that's a bit confused on what they should be doing with their own, you know, health and leisure or fitness business, etc. Then by all means, point them in the direction of this video. Or if it's someone that is unsure of the direction that they need to take with their own training and they're not confident in the, the environment that they're in, then again, support them, point them in the right direction, etc. Now that you know the information. Please stick to all instructions that are given, okay? They are for the safety of others, not just for yourself. As I mentioned before, you don't know the personal situation of the other person. They're not going to be walking around with their medical um, their medical history on the chest, okay? And again, they could have people who are in their family that are vulnerable, okay? So please look after each other as well. Also remember, okay, this is going to be commonplace. So it's not just, you know, people who are training with myself. This should be across the whole industry, it, if it's not, then, you know, it's a, it's a business that's been run poorly and ultimately it's going to negatively affect the name of the industry, which I would personally be unhappy about and I'm sure other people would be too. And as soon as any uh, situation changes regarding guidance or any advice, it will be acted upon, okay? So as things start to relax, then of course we'll start removing some measures, make things a little bit more comfortable. We will keep some things in place just because of good practice and why not? Um, but again, if things have to tighten up a little bit more, then of course we'll be acting on that to make sure that everyone is safe as physically possible and feeling like they are in a safe environment. Finally, if there's any official queries directed to anything that's been said in here, please feel free to email, okay, the email address there, so info at 3pwilbhampton.co.uk. Um, if you train with myself or 3p as a whole, okay, please do not send messages or phone calls, etc. Okay, official queries need to be answered through email because then there's a record that's put in place. It means that it can be acted upon. You know what it's like if you receive a phone call or a text and then you, you're busy and you don't really take it in and then unfortunately it doesn't get acted upon. Okay, so official queries, just send them straight through to the email address. Okay, it's not a big deal. I answer queries all the time and you should be more than happy to do that, especially if you have any concerns or anything that you want to share on this. Okay. So thanks for sticking through this video. Hugely important that you watch through the whole thing because it benefits not just you, but everyone else as well. And I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you very soon.